it may be lecture number three of fire and making class and the topic is charging system so before uh, discussing about the charging system for blast furnace iron making uh, let me tell you some important points uh, in blast furnace iron making the most interesting thing is the heat utilization and second one is high efficiency of the blast furnace so these are the two main important characteristics of blast furnace iron making because you can produce iron by blast furnace or you can produce iron by uh, direct reduction process that is called sponge iron making or you can produce iron by smelting reduction process so basically blast furnace is a very old technology but still still it is still people are using i mean still industrialists are using blast furnace to extract iron from iron ore because of these two main reasons one is high heat utilization that means the heat which is coming out due to burning of coke and coal and due to certain reactions also exothermic reactions that heat is getting utilized properly in the blast furnace right for smelting purpose right and second one is the efficiency of blast furnace is also good you can say thermal efficiency or chemical efficiency both are also good right so if i am talking about thermal efficiency you understood that means heat transfer is good heat transfer between carbon monoxide hot carbon monoxide gas or the gas which is ascending up that is transferring the heat to the ore right and second one is chemical efficiency means the reduction is also good reduction efficiency in terms of that means the carbon monoxide the carbon they properly react with the iron ore there are certain losses is also there as i told solution loss reaction some carbon monoxide remain unutilized but still blast furnace is, is a very good technology still people are using hmm. also i can say blast furnace also gives high productivity the rate of production is very high if you are using blast furnace so these are this is another important point about blast furnace anyways so if we want that blast furnace efficiency should be maintained or blast furnace blast furnace efficiency should be uh, good enough then charge distribution is very important charge distribution or burden distribution technically the raw materials which we are feeding into the furnace basically the solid raw materials huh? the coke the sinter pellets lumps limestone dolomite anything that feeding into the furnace are called burden basically burden huh? or charge hmm. so the distribution of the charge or distribution of the burden should be uniform inside the furnace anybody remember if the distribution will be not uniform what will happen obviously obviously it will affect the efficiency of the furnace the furnace efficiency will go down but how can anybody remember sir the reduction will not take place properly the gas will uh, pass out from the least resistance yeah 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 very good very good huh. this is one of the reason that means the the flow of gas always finds a easy path where it can flow easily so there the reduction will be easier and heat transfer will be easier obviously and the the way where it is not easily pass the reduction will be not proper and the heat transfer will be not proper so distribution of charge is very important so now the question is how we are distributing distributing the burden inside the furnace actually earlier days uh, the technology called bell charging system bell huh? it's kind of a bell you can imagine just just a bell which uh, we use in uh, schools and all for uh, to notify the time huh? bell kind of system huh? so it's 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 you can say it's bell and hopper system i'll show you huh, the image here yeah. Let's have a look. This is this is the you can so this is the blast furnace, huh? This this part is the blast furnace, and anybody remember what is this part called? This one, this one. Throat, huh? throat, throat. Very good, throat, huh? And do you anybody anybody have any idea what is this? This one and this one, these two pipes. this pipe and 
this pipe this this is called uptake you have to remember uptake u u p t a k uptake because through this your hot gases the flue gas or the waste gas or the top gas comes out of the furnace fine that is called uptake hmm. they basically finally join to a single tube or pipe huh. that is called down cover you have to remember so basically in single blast furnace there may be three or four uptake there are kind of pipes through which the top gas comes out of the furnace and they join a single big pipe which moves downward that is called down comer you have to remember huh. uptake and down comer forget about that now but see so this is your small bell huh just have a look this part is a small bell and this is the hopper this is your hopper hmm. hopper and this is the bell similarly just have a look this is the hopper hmm. and this is the big bell so this is actually two bell arrangement system or two hopper bell arrangement system so similarly uh, many industry have tried for three bell arrangement system four bell arrangement system suppose uh, some 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 industry is using four bell that means that that means four bell will be there according to their increasing in the size and the hopper size will also become larger right so this is this is the image of two bell arrangement system huh? so how it works like just imagine huh? just imagine how it looks like huh? just imagine you have a cube huh? you have a cube and in that cube it is made up of steel for example huh? that cube is made up of steel but that cube is a hollow cube huh? hollow cube means adjacent sides are closed but top part and bottom part is open huh? that consider that is as, as an hopper right and you imagine you have a bell hanging huh? that that the rope of the bell is going from top to bottom right so if you pull the rope the bell will close the hopper it is okay if you if you release the rope it will go down and what will happen the hopper will open you understood my point or shall i repeat up to this sir please repeat this one sir. just just imagine you have a cube cube not solid cube hollow cube made up of steel for example hmm. it is okay now and in that cube the top part is open bottom part is open but adjacent sides are closed yes, hmm. and you have a bell and that bell is attached to a rope hmm. so this rope is passing through the top to bottom fine so if you pull the rope upward it will close the cube yes or no but if you allow the rope to move down the bell will go down and the hopper will be open fine or the cube will be open right is it okay yes sir you people have understood what i mean to say i am talking about hopper and bell system now right so similarly that means you have a small hopper and a small bell similarly you have a big hopper and a big bell right small bell is on the top big big bell is on the bottom part right so so what happens this is a rail actually ha huh? rail rail having a buckets so what happens from the yard suppose iron ore is taken out in a required quantity and it moves through the rail huh? and this bucket is pouring the material into the first small bell hopper ha huh? this is the first stage the first the first stage is the bucket is pouring the raw materials into the small bell fine big bell is closed small bell is closed but the bucket is pouring the material into the small bell fine or hop hopper small bell hopper right next second stage stage will be what the small bell will go down why obviously the weight on the bell will increase so it will go down and when the bell will go down the hopper will get opened just have a look the material is now moving to the big big hopper huh? or big bell arrangement system right so this is the second stage but big bell big bell is not going down right, right now the second stage huh? so in the third stage what will happen obviously when the weight will be more the larger bell will go down and when the larger bell will go down this hopper will uh, now get opened so it will release the metal into the furnace now and this will remain closed hmm. and fourth finally this big bell will get closed again right so this is the this is the sequence of charging any confusion you have in this no sir 
it is okay so if there will be question you can draw the diagram and you can explain nothing this is very simple thing right so now uh, there is an issue that means nowadays i think maybe few industry are still using this arrangement but i don't think so anybody is using or not nowadays but there is a new charging system called bell less top huh, the top of the furnace is bell less there is no bell there is neither a single bell two bell three bell four bell there is no bell only a rotating tube huh, is there right so that means obviously this kind of arrangement system have some limitation that's why so the limitations i'll show you just have a look this is the limitation formation of b profile formation of m profile it is okay formation of v profile formation of m profile these two kind of profile is forming due to this bell arrangement system so just imagine one layer is coke one layer is ore right here also one layer is coke one layer is ore hmm? okay so can you tell me do you have any idea suppose you this is this is the furnace wall right you just this is the furnace wall this is the furnace wall similarly this is also a furnace wall this is furnace wall but this is a v shape profile forming and this is a m kind of shape forming right you people are getting my point v shape then this is m shape so suppose from bottom hot hot air or hot carbon monoxide is moving so can you tell me here in which area the moment of in which area the moment of hot carbon monoxide will be easy and where it will be difficult in this part in v profile so in v profile it will be easy for the excipients of the my question is in this v profile formation that means in the inside the furnace there is a v profile formation is there so in which case the in which area actually i'm talking about in which area that means near the wall or at the center or near the wall at the center where in which area the movement of carbon monoxide will be easy near the wall near the wall near the wall, near the wall. how <laughs> just have a look this is going downward this is empty part empty part now this is empty right here raw material is in more amount right so there will be more hindrance now there will be more hindrance to the carbon monoxide in this region but in the center part the carbon monoxide hot carbon monoxide can easily go because the amount of material is not there here right you understood my point this area is there is no material here right more material is present at the wall this is the wall of the furnace huh? this part is the wall this is a blast furnace and you have you have used bell arrangement system due to this bell arrangement system v profile has formed now you got the answer I, what i mean to say yes sir similarly in the m profile just have a look in the m profile can you tell me in which which area the moment of carbon monoxide will be easy and difficult this is also furnace wall this is also furnace wall but the profile formed is m hmm. the black region is coke for example and white region is the iron ore just have a clearly look again this part is free yes or no this is in middle portion so carbon monoxide can easily pass through this region without because less hindrance is there similarly also at the wall also wall just have a look wall also this there is a is gap right but in this region just just have a look in this part and near to the wall this part the hindrance is more right now you got my answer what i mean to say So shall I repeat? So can you repeat it, sir? Yeah, in the M profile, just just carefully look at the profile. This is M. Hmm. This is kind of M, na? M is written. Just imagine this is M, right? So since this is M, just look at this reason. This reason is at higher reason, right? That means carbon monoxide will find more difficulty to go through this path, but it can easily go. just near to the wall and it can easily go through the center easily but this reason it will find more difficulty similarly in this reason this reason 
find more difficulty in M profile. But in B profile, completely this wall part, it will find more difficult. Here also more difficult, but at the center, it can easily flow. right? So if carbon monoxide is carrying chemical energy and heat energy, so distribution of chemical energy and heat energy will be non-uniform if B profile will form and if M profile will form. Yes or no? No. It is okay up to this. Now, now I have a question. Can can anybody tell me? Actually, this M profile formation and B prof profile formation inside the blast furnace is due to the gap between the wall and the in between the wall and the bell. Huh. If the ga gap is more, what will which profile will form? If the gap will be less, which profile will form? Can anyone tell me? Or you can say this gap, this gap, huh? This gap between the bell and hopper, you can say. Or basically, people say wall and this one. If the, this gap will be more if gap will be less, what will happen? Which kind of profile will form? V or M? V. V. Very good. Because if gap will be less, maximum metal will fall near to the wall, right? Completely near to the wall, right? So what will happen? Other things will roll down, come to the center. Obviously, from here it will roll down and come to the center. So V profile will form basically. But if the opening is more, the gap is more, or the metal will fall near to the center not exactly at the wall not exactly at the center in between that here also it will fall here right so obviously some material will roll to the center some material will roll towards the wall right similarly in this direct in this side some material will roll down to the center some material will roll down to the wall so m profile will form is it okay now you people have understood yes sir right so this is the main issue with the bell charging system so that's why no, nobody is using this one so now new system is the rotating tube let me show you the diagram this is the diagram of rotating tube just have a look these are the two hoppers metal is fitted into the hopper and finally there is this is the rotating tube just have a look this is this part is the rotating tube you can see arrow mark is there right this is an arrow mark this tube will this is the material coming out just have a look this is rotating in a 360 degree completely rotated inside the furnace in 360 degree. So that means in every area it is feeding same amount of material. So there will be no M profile, there will be no B profile and everything is parallel. You understood my point? Yes, sir. Right. So this is, this is the base system nowadays. Huh? Just, just have a look. This is another image I have shown you. This is, this is one hopper. This is one hopper, right? Suppose this is showing Coke. This is showing pellet, right? So anybody remember uh, do we mix the pellets with the coke and we charge it or we charge separately coke and separately pellets anybody remember that sir separately we charge separately. No. always we charge separately we never mix it right can you tell me what is the reason behind that sir that sequence is maintained which you told c c then o then c c that's one yeah yeah that sequence is maintained because you are feeding like that that sequence is maintained but why we are feeding why we are not mixing the materials any 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 answers from your side because first because in the blast furnace first we have to maintain the reducing atmosphere after that we have to charge the pellets and sinter do you think that this is a continuous process. You are continuously charging, continuously charging the raw material, right? And material is moving down sir, and getting consumed. Sir, if you charge simultaneously, then there will less time of reduction. Less time of reduction. Mm. Just have a look. This is a blast furnace, right? This is a blast furnace. The red part is the coke and white part is the pellet. So you can see alternate layer. So for example, in this diagram, it is shown or coke or coke or coke or coke right but below this or you have a coke layer again if you go down right you understood my point is it okay sir this sequence is maintained because i think for better permeability 
yeah yeah very good because to maintain better permeability why i told one important point at the bosch bosch region what is the important point about bosch region anybody remember what happens at the bosch region direct reduction occurs yeah direct reduction happens that's good but uh, what about the physical thing happen physical thing that is the chemical thing happens in direct reduction sir everything is liquid except coke yeah very good except coke everything is liquid so if if you are mixing the raw materials then there will be no bed of coke right this is a kind of bed of coke coke bed is there right or coke slits in technical it is called coke slits that means coke having permeability right suppose you just imagine this is the uh, lowest part forget about this one this is the lowest part and this part is now in molten state so it can easily pass through the voids present in the coke layer right because coke is solid and this one will become liquid you understood my point so to provide permeability because in the bosch region temperature is so high everything becomes liquid but coke remains solid so there will be a solid bed of coke will be there which provide permeability to the molten slag and molten metal so that molten metal molten slag can go down to the hot easily and similarly your carbon monoxide hot carbon monoxide can go up through this coke bed is it okay yes sir but but if they are in mixed form another issue can happens they may this molten metal molten slag may coat also right it can form a coating on the coke itself yes or no if they are in mixture obviously na it can form a co coating na they will mix they may form a bonding also right so this this is the thing anyways so you can see this is the rotating tube ha huh? this rotate in 360 degree direction just have a look this image crusher is ever visible na no? yes see this, yes, how sir. it is charging it is charging like this in 360 degree direction so everywhere it is supplying same amount of material so what will happen if you take a cross section of the blast furnace so you'll find there will be no b profile there will be no m profile the distribution of charge is completely uniform right this is called bell less top system fine right? then next i'll quickly quickly move to the blast furnace plant okay right? blast furnace plant here it is a very good diagram just have a look so you have a blast furnace proper uh, this is called blast furnace or blast furnace proper hmm. you have a gas cleaning system these are the gas cleaning system we have this is called dust catcher this is called scrubber this is called electrostatic precipitator right and you have a stove blast furnace stove not a single stove for single blast furnace we can have three or four blast furnace stove operating right and we have a turbo blowers which blow hot which blow basically normal air which pass through this hot uh, hot blast stove right and you have charging uh, you have uh, raw material yard where your raw materials are stored your uh, then you have this skip rail which contains skip buckets right and this is your what this is this is the blast furnace proper huh? which contain blast furnace itself and also contains the what i told anybody remember what is this called i told just before starting of the class this part is called this pipe is called what what is this pipe called i told you just sir a couple of minutes ago uptake very good uptake what is the function of uptake i told sir to remove the gases yeah the hot to remove the top gas right anybody remember what is the composition of top gas the major composition of top gas is what carbon dioxide carbon monoxide nitrogen and uh, dust particles dust particles yeah very good and some moisture will be there h2o right anyways so and this this three to four pipes are connected to a single pipe this this is a single big pipe this is called down comer what i told it is written over here also down comer right anybody remember uh this what is the function of dust catcher sir to remove the solid particles that dust particles and all yeah because the top gas contains dust particles iron oxide particles are present it should be removed first then only you can use this top gas because of presence of carbon monoxide right because carbon monoxide have some calorific value we cannot waste it and also it carries some potential uh, sensible heat energy also right so the function of dust catcher is to remove coarse particles 
coarse iron oxide particles right and what is the function of scrubber the function of scrubber is to remove basically intermediate size particles and the function of electrostatic precipitator is to remove very very fine particles and each function is different right so to remove coarser particles this, this is the dust catcher then dust catcher the the purified air will go into this one to remove the intermediate size particles and finally the air will move to the esp to remove very very fine particles micron size particles and fi finally the top will be pure and it will send to the hot blast stove so that it can provide you heat energy upon burning right because i told the clean gas contain carbon monoxide this carbon monoxide can can be undergo combustion to provide you heat energy right and some some uh, top gas also goes back into the furnace to provide high top pressure so this is not the right time to discuss that high top pressure but anyways you should remember so now uh, anybody remember what how the dust catcher works quickly in one line can anyone tell me this i think this, uh, this part has been discussed in the class maybe am i right or not am i audible sir so that velocity is reversed i think velocity is reversed yeah this is one of the point but but technically but technically if you see just have a look down comer pipe dimension and this chamber dimension which one is bigger down comer yes sir chamber down chamber dimension yeah yeah so what happens chamber dimension if the pipe if the pipe dimension is small and the velocity of gas is very high what will happen the solid particle will be easily carried away by the gas particles right but the moment the dimension is increasing what will happen the pressure will drop right due to expansion what will happen this part is, the gas will start expanding so velocity will go down yes or no you are flowing a gas through a small diameter pipe and suddenly the pipe diameter increases what happened to the velocity of gas it will reduce or not yes sir it will reduce no obviously so if the velocity of gas will reduce what will happen to the particles they will settle down why because of gravitational force yes or no you understood my point shall i repeat or you people are getting my point just you need to imagine why solid particles are present in the gas because of the velocity because the gas is flowing with a high velocity that's why the solid particles are carried away carried away with the gases right but if you increase the diameter of the pipe suddenly what will happen the velocity will drop right if the velocity will drop obviously then there is a gravitational force always acting on the particles so it will fall down at the bottom so the dust particle will collected over here and the gas will move to next chamber scrubber so scrubber may be dry scrubber wet scrubber right some people are using dry i mean some industry are using wet scrubber where we are flowing water spraying water from the top and having some wood blocks so what will happen the solid particle will get wetted by the uh, spraying water and wash away easily the gas will be not wetted away by the uh, water spraying water so it can easily flow to the top and it will move to the esp and esp how it works basically esp works on the basis of uh, like we are applying high voltage due to which what will happen the very fine particles present in the gas will get ionized it will uh, not i not exactly ionized it, it may get ionized or it may carry some charged particles negative or positive charged particles it get charged due to high potential or high voltage so there will be certain plates will be there plate arrangement system will be there so plate are also get uh, charged right so if plate is negatively charged and the particles micro micron size particle is positively charged they will attach to the plate finally okay you understood my point now and what will happen if you switch off the potential what will happen they will fall down again to the bottom it is okay i think it is fine up to this any questions So please repeat the ESP part once again. 
ESP, ESP, ESP is used to remove very, very fine particles present in the top gas. Very fine particles means micron size particles. Right? Because obviously micron size particles cannot be removed by dust catcher. It cannot be removed by scrubber. It can only it can only be removed by ESP. In ESP, what happens from the top? It, those plates are connected to the high voltage. Right? So what will happen if you apply very high voltage? The particles, the very fine particles present in the gas, will get charged. It may get positive charge, negative charge, right? And the plate is also carrying some charge, right? Positive or negative. So obviously they will get attached to the plates, right? And the moment you switch off the voltage, what will happen? There will be no charge on the plate now. So the, they will fall down at the bottom and they can be collected, right? This is a very expensive process actually. Hmm. And finally, the gas come out will be pure one, clean gas, top clean gas. Sir, please can now, you explain how the wet scrubber works? Sorry, sorry, can you please repeat? Sir, please can you please can you explain the function of dry scrubber means how it's remove the solid particles? Actually, yeah, the, the, I if I'm right if I'm not wrong, but uh, dry scrubber is there is some benefit in dry scrubber, but how it how people doing how people are doing exactly i don't know i also don't know exactly but weight scrubber i have seen they used to spray water from the top and some wooden blocks will be there having porous porous wooden, wooden blocks or perforated wooden blocks through which the gas will pass away but the solid particles will attach to the liquid uh, this water and flow away to the bottom but dry scrubber how they are doing exactly i don't know i also don't know exactly maybe maybe they are using some bags filter bags maybe maybe but i'm not sure but sir, if we focus on the diagram, at last the flue gases are moving into the stove to heat it. So if we use wet scrubber, then your the temperature voice is, will no, no, reduce. Your, vo your voice is echoing, right? Uh, I am getting echo from your voice. Yeah, can you can you repeat your question again? Sir, if we focus on the diagram. So at yeah, last yeah. we are seeing that the flue gas is moving into the stove to heat it. So if we use wet scrubber, then the temperature which we will get is very less. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is, yeah. That is yeah. That is that is one of the limitation of wet scrubber. You have to remember there are two main major limitation of wet scrubber. One major limitation is you are losing sensible heat because of wetting. And second one is you are generating a lot of wastewater and wastewater need to be treated again and it will you have to pay money for that right it makes the process expensive right so that is one of the issue so that's why some plants are using dry scrubber also but i don't exactly know how it works but the thing is you should not be confused we are not focusing on the recovery of this kind of heat because the the temperature of the Top gas is only 200 degrees centigrade. You, you understood my point? It is okay? Yes, sir. We are using top gas because it contains carbon monoxide. If you collect the clean top gas and you ignite it, it will burn. Because carbon monoxide is still there. It will burn and it will give you carbon dioxide plus heat energy. Is it okay now? Right? You got my point? Yes, sir. Sir, carbon dioxide or monoxide? The top gas contains CO and CO2 both. But since CO is present, I told when you burn carbon, it will give rise to either CO or CO2 or both. Right? Always. CO2 always forms due to complete combustion of carbon. But CO forms due to incomplete combustion of carbon. That means in CO, some carbon particles are still there in form of solution. So if you have CO, that means some carbon particles are still there. You can burn it to provide heat energy. right? So because of presence of carbon monoxide, this top gas is important. That's why we are cleaning that. And we are utilizing in the hot blast stove. Sometimes we, are, we can use uh, to drive turbines to generate uh, electricity by driving the gas-based turbine. right? Or we can uh, so uh, use it for high top pressure also. Hmm. 
is it okay now or shall i repeat anything yes yes sir now i'm i'll talk about hot blast stove quickly huh? just just have a look you might get a question from this also huh? you might get a question like draw the layout of blast furnace plan so what do you need to draw this this diagram layout of the blast furnace blast furnace layout blast furnace you have to show blast furnace you have to show uptake down comer then dust catchers cover esp hot blast stove turbo blowers and this skip rails and the uh, orient you have to draw this diagram huh? this is very easy the practice it for the time it will be easy huh? then you can get a question like uh, draw the diagram of hot blast stove and explain how it works this kind of question you can get huh? so this is the diagram of hot blast stove so in in it in this image hot blast stove is here huh? right this is the hot blast stove so i told for a single blast furnace we can have three to four hot blast stove right anyways so this is a dome shape you can see you can write this is a dome shape you can you have to remember the height and diameter diameter i remember it is 9 to 10 meter maybe or height will be like above 20 meters maybe or 16 to 20 meters i don't remember the exact figure you can check it huh, better so in this stove we have two chambers the left chamber is called combustion chamber this chamber A right chamber is called refractory checker chamber. Huh? Refractory checkers big chamber. Huh? So this is combustion chamber. This is refractory chamber. So in this refractory chamber, lot of refractory bricks are used, having some space between them, right? And these are porous porous refractory bricks, so that air can easily pass through it, right? And combustion chamber function is here. Combustion will take place, right? Combustion of what? Combustion of this, uh, basically. this top gas we are com we are doing combustion of this top gas so you can see what are the path this is a path to hot blast valve hmm. and this is a path for burner huh? to do combustion burner huh? and this is a path to chimney right just have a look this is a path to chimney this is a path of burner maybe a uh, gas based burner or maybe a liquid based burner and this is the path to blast furnace blast furnace ha huh? hot blast valve right so what exactly happen after cleaning of top gas the gas will come through this and go into the combustion chamber so clean top gas will go into the combustion chamber here there will be a burner so it will ignite the top gas so when the top gas will ignited it will release lot a lot of heat right this this gas will is carrying lot of heat so this is the gas will move through this chamber huh. to chimney so while this will move to this chamber and move to chimney so what will happen here checker bricks will be there refractory bricks will be there so this refractory brick will absorb all the heat right and the gas will get cooled down and go to the chimney right but now the heat energy is is inside the refractory checkers or the checker bricks or you can say heat energy is with the refractory bricks right so next stage will be what from the atmosphere fresh air will move from this direction and it will go through this path like this just suppose it and to the hot blast valve then to the blast furnace right so what happens when the fresh air will come from the atmosphere it will reach to this chamber it will extract the heat present in the checker bricks or the refractory bricks now refractory bricks will cool down but now the heat is present in the fresh air that will go to the blast furnace right so it is working in a cyclic manner the first cycle is called on gas second cycle is called on blast is it okay or shall i repeat any doubt or shall i repeat again Uh, repeat the second cycle part. Second cycle. Okay. First cycle is called on gas. On gas means combustion is happening, and direction of the top clean gas is here. They just have a look. This will go through this. It will move in this direction and in this direction and to the chimney. This is called on gas cycle. Continuously, the top 
clean gas is moving into this combustion chamber it is undergoing combustion and it is getting heated up and moving to the this chamber so that the checker bricks will absorb the heat and finally it will go to the chimney this is called on gas on blast means reverse direction fresh air from the atmosphere will come maybe through turbo blowers turbo blow blower is blowing the air maybe it is going in this direction right now finally it will come out through here to the hot blast valve and then to the hot blast furnace finally to the blast furnace through bushel pipe you remember i told bushel pipe through bushel pipe it will move and finally through the two year it will go into the furnace right so in the on blast cycle the direction of flow is reverse the fresh air is coming and absorbing the heat present in the checker bricks and the air is getting hot and it is moving in this direction and finally to the bushel pipe then finally to the two year into the furnace is it okay yes sir so can anyone tell me why we are using two to three stoves not one stove at least three stoves are used huh? you have to remember if you use a single stove then then on on gas will be there right suppose the hot blast stove is on gas so then how you supply blast to the furnace it is impossible yes or no you are getting my point suppose a single you have a single hot blast stove so if the hot blast stove is is in on gas now that means continuously clean gas is coming combustion is going on and this brick is getting heated up right suppose it is for 20 minutes maybe may let it be 20 minutes for that 20 minutes how you can supply hot blast you cannot supply hot blast but continuously the blast furnace need hot blast it is a continuous process you understood once blast furnace is started it runs up to 15 to 20 years that is called campaign life it is okay you understood my point yes sir that's why we have suppose three stove if one stove will be on 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 uh, gas then two stove will be on on blast that means if this stove is on on gas that means the direction of movement of air is like this from left to right hmm. it is hitting it is getting heated up right other two stoves are already heated up so that we can provide on on blast it, it will be on on blast because heating takes time cooling takes less time you understood if you are doing heating it will take more time but if you are cooling the bricks it will take less time is it okay yes sir fine there are certain modification but i i don't know i should tell okay let me tell you quickly otherwise there are certain modification we have now new kind of hot blast stove what, what is exactly we are doing we are increasing the refractory checker chamber huh. we are increasing the volume of refractory checker bricks hmm. if we can anybody tell me if we increase the volume of refractory checker bricks what what is the advantage we will get what i told what is the function of refractory bricks answer lies in that only it absorbs heat yeah very good it absorbs the heat it store the heat right so if you increase the volume or if you increase the area of the checker bricks then what will happen you can store more amount of heat yes or no yes. more heat can be stored now suppose you are using 10 number let it be you are using 100 number of bricks now you are increasing suppose 500 number of bricks so in which case you can store more heat energy obviously where you are using 500 number of bricks so to store 500 number of bricks you need more volume more area right so yes. one changes is what in one changes this entire stove except the dome entire stove becomes the refractory checker bricks very interesting there will be no combustion chamber here it total it becomes refractory checker bricks only combustion will take place in the dome is it is interesting or not you understood my point Yes, sir. You do combustion here and pass the air through all the total volume is utilized. That is very interesting. There is another modification where you are doing combustion outside the stove 
and you you make entire stove as a checker bricks including dome is it okay you understood my point these are the two modification hmm. in first modification i told there will be the combustion chamber also become the refractory checker chamber the entire it becomes only the dome becomes the combustion chamber right and in second modification entire stove including dome it become the re refractory checker chamber outside you are doing combustion okay these are the two modification you know the places where iron ore deposits are available jharkhand and odisha are the major supplier of iron ore ha uh, you remember you have to understand jharkhand singhum district odisha keunjar bolani mayurbhanj katak in chatisgarh also baladilia baladila sorry uh, of bastar district uh, then rajahar hills in durg district these are the good uh, reserve of iron ore huh? maharashtra ratnagiri chandrapur district anantapur in andhra pradesh these are the main deposits of iron ore Hmm. There is a there is a uh, just have a look how raw material for iron making for one ton, to produce one ton of iron how much raw amount of raw materials you need to require you need to require iron ore lumps center pellets up to two thousand to two thousand five hundred kg hmm. metallurgical coke four fifty kg. flux dolomite limestone it is 300 to 400 kg you need to remember this hot air 4000 to 500 and pulverized coal not written for 1 ton of iron you need 3.5 to 4 ton of solid charge uh, this you need to remember can you tell me which one is more costly from all these raw materials which one is more costly iron ore or metallurgical coke or flux or air or which one is more costly a pulverized coal The coke is more costly. Coke. coke, coke is more costly. Yeah, very good. So one of the major limitation of blast furnace iron making is you need a coke oven plant. Addition to blast furnace plant, you need a coke oven plant because coke is not available in the nature. What is available? Coal is available. A special kind of coal that is bituminous coal. Huh? You have to remember a special kind of coal that is called bituminous coal, which can only be converted into coke. because of certain characteristics in that particular coal right a certain kind of bituminous coal can be converted into coke that that's particular coal is called metallurgical coal we call it says metallurgical coal right metallurgical coal is that kind of coal or it is a special kind of bituminous coal which can be converted into coke upon carbonization process hmm. high temperature carbonization basically hmm. anybody remember what happens during carbonization Uh, the moisture content and the volatile materials is removed very good, from very the good. coal the volatile metals present will get removed the moisture content will also get removed very good and fixed carbon content will increase ha huh. these are certain uh, minerals of iron yeah uh, let me tell you acha nobody nobody is asking me maybe you have studied in uh, fuel furnace and refractory why a certain kind of bituminous coal becomes coke upon heating why not other coal like anthracite why not anthracite why not peat or why not lignite these are the four types of coal available you people know that peat lignite anthracite bituminous which coal is having highest rank anybody remember Which coal is having high strength? Peat lignite. Sorry. Anthracite. Anthracite. Why it is having high strength? Why? Ah, uh, due to high calorific value. Due to high calorific value or due to presence of high fixed carbon percentage. Yes, sir. Fixed carbon. It is above ninety, basically. Huh. Higher is the fixed carbon percentage, or in other way, you can say. 
lower is the moisture content lower is the volatile matter content lower is the ash content is it okay yes sir but nobody is asking me okay let me ask you why then if fixed carbon percent is high obviously calorific value will be good obviously that is a better coal but why this anthracite is not considered as a metallurgical coal rather than uh, bituminous coal bituminous coal have less amount of fixed carbon compared to anthracite can anybody answer me about this did did you people ask this question to your professor while uh, they are taking your class sir anthracite coals are uh, coals are not found in india so it is uh, expensive <laughs> no 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 that is not the technical answer don't tell me like that okay let it be it is available in india in plenty amount still you cannot convert anthracite into anthracite coal into coke for blast furnace iron making it is not possible because because that particular bituminous coal shows certain property during carbonization process anybody remember what is the main uh, ad advantage of this coke it is very strong and hard right tough and also contain porosity these are the two things right but if you do if you try to make coke out of anthracite peat lignite it won't show this kind of property right so during actually during carbonization process that particular coal undergo certain kind of physical and chemical changes it actually become fused and it become porous at the end it become soft it become fused and it it resolidified it when it resolidified it become porous and strong okay you can check my notes huh? class notes better how you value iron ore it is very simple valuation of iron ore how you can value iron ore high, iron ore value is high low or medium it depends upon the richness obviously how much percentage of iron is present obviously right location location of the industry obviously then composition of the gang whether how much amount of silica tio2 al2o3 are present right how it is uh, how you are doing mineral processing or beneficiation that is also important and final end use all these things will give you the value of the iron ore right i'll stop here huh? you have any questions up to this yeah this is also very important criteria of coke for iron making in blast furnace so volatile matter should be less than 2% ash content should be less than 10% fixed carbon percent should be greater than 85% these are the criteria you have to remember that means less ash content should be there less volatile matter content should be there more fixed carbon should be there huh. okay any question up to this So there is no more question, right?